Hi everyone, how are we all doing? Thank you very much for tuning in to my latest video. Um, I just want to say thank you very much for 15,000 subscribers. Um, I, again, I love every one of you. Thank you very much for keeping this going. Um, and I do I really appreciate it. So I'll try and keep making videos as, as often as I can. Um, I don't want to make too many because I don't want to bore people. I would rather have quality over quantity. Um, I know people, some people post every day, sometimes twice a day, but like I say, I, I, I don't want to bore people, but I'd like to keep it interesting. Um, and I think if you, if you sort of go for quality over quantity, that's probably the best way to do that, to keep it interesting. Um, so today's, the, the, the title of today's video is called um, Lockdowns, Lies and Apparent Cures, as you can see. Now, this, this is obviously related to um, the situation we had in 2020. I'm going to watch what I'm saying with these words because um, I don't want algorithms to pick it up. However, what I'll be revealing today is nothing that's not really been revealed anyway. I mean, you might hear some information that you've never heard before, um, but this is all out there. Um, even the, 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 the engineers of the vaccines have had to admit what people like me were saying on, on, on sort of the first month when this all kicked off. And that's sort of why I want to, 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 to cover it as well, because it's obviously been a big part of why the world is as it is just now. Um, that, was the, that was the trigger, as David Icke calls it. Um, I actually call it uh, the, the last play of their final stage, because um, that's what it is, or the final stage of their last play, sorry. Um, it's the other way about. And that, that is what it is. Um, there was, I've seen and people, I've said this before, so many people argue about, ah, this is why they've done it, or that's why they've done it, or I'm right and you're wrong. You, and I've said before, you're both right. They never just do something for one reason. There's always multiple reasons attached to it. Now, when, when this kicked off in 2020, I was like everyone else before I'd done any research into it. For all, I know, for all I had known, there, there, there could have been something going on outside where people could have been killed from it. And when you were looking at it in places like China, it would appear that people were dropping dead on the street. So any, any, any adult thinking human is going to take a look at that and think, right, okay, I need to take some precautions here. Um, but as time sort of started to go on, it was, I mean, you were looking out the window and you were thinking, well, what, what is it that's different? And I remember someone at the time had used a very good analogy, I can't remember who it was, but they'd said, back in the Second World War, like during the Blitz on, in London, when you looked outside, um, you could see something was wrong, something was amiss, because there was churches that had been reduced to rubble, um, and people were dying. However, in 2020, when you looked out the window, did things look any different to what it did in February 2020, when you compare it to March 2020? And I, and I don't think it did. And I myself never followed one restriction, and, and I'm proud to say that, and I said that at the time that I was proud of it, and I got a lot of stick for it, and I got a lot of ridicule for it. But I could see where this was going, because even though I wasn't aware of what was going on in the beginning, as time sort of started to go on, you could see that there were tick, starting to tick boxes, boxes that I had known were needed to be ticked by these elite scumbags. Um, Mandatory vaccinations was one of their goals. Destroying the economy, the economy was another. Okay, didn't get mandatory vaccinations, but there's a lot of people took them. Um, that was just two of the goals. Dystopian control. Everyone, I mean, I've said it before. We're like house plants with co complicated emotions. We need sunlight, water, and a lot of love. And during COVID or during the lockdowns, we 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 weren't getting that. Um, well, maybe people were getting some love from their family, but we weren't getting enough sunlight uh, or even water. I mean, I don't know, I can't say for that, like, because obviously people were doing what they were doing. I know a lot of people were eating junk food. Um, I myself didn't actually went the other way. I wanted to, so I started sort of working out in April 2020. And, and I'm glad I did because, I mean, you can, people can look at COVID and say, well, it was, it was, it was, and it was, it was horrible. There's no getting around it, but, you could have had it as a negative experience, as a positive experience, and that was based on you. So that was when I started doing my, 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 my walks. Um, and like I say, I'm glad I did. It's, I've actually got fond memories of it now because um, 
it gave me plenty of time to be able to start an implant to start to implement a sort of healthy lifestyle of exercise and eating correctly. So I'll always be grateful to it for that. But at the beginning of it, um, and one of the first posters that I had actually seen was, well, the first one that I'd seen was in Wilco's in Castle Douglas, where they had said that we will not set, accept any cash. I had actually taken a photo of it in an old phone of mine. Um, I've not got the phone anymore, like just for historical purposes, but that was the first one I'd seen. The second one I'd seen, just a fun fact, that's actually closed down now, that shop up there, so maybe Karma got it in the end. But then the second poster that I'd seen was, the, and this was a World Health Organization poster, coronaviruses cannot be transported through the air. This was in like March, about the end of March 2020, and it was by the July they'd made, they'd made masks mandatory, so I don't know why they were doing that, but I'll come to masks later on in the video. Now, everyone at the start of it was looking at their, t their, their, their news channels, and every news channel was saying that this was happening, this is what's going on. Um, and then that, that, that sort of brought Imperial College in, into it. Now this Imperial College, I don't know if you don't know, was the college that were running the computer models, namely by the guy of a, 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 Neil Ferguson, his name is. Neil Ferguson, um, as I understand it, or it was the same Neil Ferguson whose models who had um, called, I think it was, I can't remember how much livestock during foot and mouth, unnecessarily called it, because his computer model said that I think it was half a million people were going to die if he didn't, destroying the, the livelihood of farmers. I know some people got out of it, but a lot of people didn't. Um, so, and then in 2007, the same Neil Ferguson had said that, or his, or his latest models had predicted that by 2019, New York would be underwater. Now this was 2020 I read this, and New York wasn't underwater. It was the same guy whose models who'd said that swine flu was going to kill whatever it was, I think it was 1.5 million people, I think a couple of hundred worldwide died off it. So the first thing I'd like to know is why the government decided to go to that idiot for a, for a computer model and a prediction anyway, because his track record was absolutely fucking shocking. So, I mean, maybe it's just me, but I thought competence is what got you jobs. That, that, that shows incompetence, and it's just, like, it's just like us. Computer models, put shite information in, you'll get shite back out. Same with these climate change models that don't, that, that, that don't filter in the effects of the sun when they're calculating it. It's ridiculous, and I'll come to climate change in another video. But this, this, this is where they get their predictions from, it's models like this one. And what was he predicting about COVID? They got that wrong as well. But that's what triggered the lockdown. Now, if you go back, you'll see Boris Johnson. I don't think a lot of Boris Johnson, and I don't... Um, but he didn't want to lock the country down. Now, whether... I might be wrong about that. It, it might just have been sort of staged to make it look like that. I don't know. But it didn't matter what he wanted because it got locked down anyway because Imperial College had pretty much guaranteed us that people were going to die if, they, if we didn't. So everyone locked down. And this, this, this is why I get so frustrated with people because people say to me all the time, well, what, what, what can I do about it? Well, see in 2020, see if everyone had just said, well, no, I'm a back burner what I've seen on the news, but what I'm going to do is, I'm going to look, listen to some of these doctors that have been censored and cancelled, because that, that's what they were doing, they were censoring and cancelling doctors. You don't silence a man by um, cutting out his tongue, all you're doing is telling the world that you're scared of what he, will, what he might say. That was George Martin that said that in a Game of Thrones book. Ironically enough, he was pushing for vaccines and, 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 and lockdowns and telling people that they shouldn't be speaking out. So the irony of that wasn't lost on me. And well, I mean, when I started to look at these, my mother was a perfect example of it. She, she, at the beginning, in the first couple of weeks, she, she was screaming at me. Yeah, people are dying. How dare you say this? And my grandfather, my grandmother, my f all my family, all of them, 
you're, you're, you're being irresponsible. And, and I said, look, this is my opinion. I'm sorry that you don't like it. But instead of rubbishing it, why don't you take a look at it? And eventually my mum did. And now that, that woman sees through this better than probably I can, the, the COVID side of it anyway, because she changed the information that was playing. Now, she, she, she would have been about 54 at the time. And it's difficult for people of a certain age to sort of change their thinking, to change their mind, because they've been through the programming for so long. But if my mother can do it, everyone can. And now she'll tell you the same, that, that yes, this, this, is, this was all planned. And we can actually pick up the COVID story back in 2010 through a Rockefeller document. And basically, I mean, I had to write it down because it's quite long. Just bear with me a second. Yeah, scenario, scenarios for the future of technology and international development. This was in 2010. And when you read that bloody document, you can see that what happened in 2020 was no accident. Now, the Rockefeller family, in my opinion, are a crime family that make the five families in New York look like child's play. Quickly on the Rockefellers, John D. Rockefeller, who started the, uh, the, the education system and said, I want a nation of workers, not thinkers, in doing so. I ask teachers all the time, does that sound like someone that wants to educate? Well, anyway, John D. John D. Rockefeller's father literally made his money as a snake oil salesman. So we use that as a, as, as, as a sort of way to, 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 to say, well, don't trust him, he's like a snake oil salesman, but this is, a, this is how this guy made his money. Not saying just because he sell, sold snake oil that he shouldn't be trusted, but it's, it's ironic that that's more than likely where that came from. So they predicted this. The Rockefellers who are, oh, oh yeah, they care about you. They want you to live a long, happy life. And they want you to take vaccines and do what they say and everything will be fine. It's just nonsense. It's just utter nonsense. And I would, I would encourage you to look into that document because it will blow your mind. And then there's a second part. There's another thing. There's another, like a simulation that came then in 2019. Who, um, it was called Event 201. And this was, this, I think it was in was it August or September. It was done through John Hopkins University. And it was a simulation. Basically asking the question of what, what would happen to the world if a global pandemic came up, fell over it, if you like, um, and started killing people. And then you look at this, you, you watch this event, and then six months later came the real thing. And I say to people, do you think that that is a coincidence? And then there's Bill Gates, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, supporting it, the Rockefeller Foundation, what funded Event 201. It's a very small world when you get to the top. But like I say, it's psychopaths. When people like that are, are sort of involved in these things, it's no surprise to me that the DWP is in the mess it's in. It's the same type of philanthropists that do it. So they predicted that and we're asked to believe that it's just a coincidence that they've set up this simulation and then six months later, the real thing comes. And it's funny, in the, in the event 201, it actually says that they would use the mainstream media to silence, silence people who were questioning it, doctors, everything. Um, they would censor people th like through Ofcom, because that's exactly what they did. Censoring doctors, telling them no. So they were deciding what you could and could not hear. There was a group of people deciding what the British public could and could not hear. And, and this is why I'm doing it, because this is, this is why I need to, I want to do this video, because this has been the trigger for it. And it's the reason why we're here. Now, this, people might see this as yesterday's news, but unfortunately, this, the problems that this has caused is only just starting for people. Some started for a, lot, a long time ago, but more and more people are becoming an, affected by the events of COVID-19. In more than one way, mentally, physically, Financially, 
And yet we've got these bloody elite scumbags who predicted it. And not only that, the man who predicted it with Event 201, Bill Gates, was the same man who funded the vaccine. If that is not a conflict of interest, and I'm not sure what is, how can that possibly be? We had a man who was a computer salesman, who I wouldn't trust as far as I could throw, dictating world health policy, he was dictating to government. How does he get that power? Not one medical qualification, and yet people were saying to me, oh, you're not a doctor. It's like, well, neither's he, but you'll listen to him. And yet at the time, I, 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 I basically stood alone, and I took a lot of ridicule, and it's not an easy thing to do, and I'm not saying, look at me, I'm brilliant. But I mean, I took a lot of people for this, and all I was trying to do was to avoid them getting this, the bioweapon, because that's what it is. That's, that's, that is essentially what it is. Look at the MHRA for the evidence of that. I'll go into that in a little bit at the end of the video, but I just wanted to stop people doing that. And hopefully the people that, 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 that do know me will, will now realise that, or now see that, that that's all it was. It was done out of pure love and I just didn't want to, 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 to see them or their health deteriorating in the way it has for some people. And sometimes I wonder if I failed them out because I think to myself, well, did I go about it the right way? Who knows? Um, maybe... It wouldn't have mattered what way I'd have gone around it. Maybe it was always meant to be that way. And, I mean, I, I, it does break my heart. I know they probably believe me for that, but I wish I had a time machine to turn it back. Sadly, I don't. But this is... People need to realise that they know what's coming. And if you've not got control of your mind, then they will get control of it. And so many people, it's to shun responsibility. I don't need to think about that because they've done the thinking for me. So many people were saying some of the crap people were coming out with at the time as well. Okay, it's okay, the government, uh, that, that's, they're, they're 90 odd percent safe or whatever it was. And it's like, well, do you know that there's actually a vaccine court in America that's paid out something? I can't remember. It's billions and billions of pounds in 10 years in compensation. If they're safe, how's that possible? You can check that on Wikipedia if you want. But between the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation predicting it and Imperial, and Imperial College running the numbers, they got everyone's consent to, 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 to do this. And we, a lot of us gave it up very, very easily. And what, and what happened? What happened? We, we, we couldn't go out the house, we couldn't visit family members, um, we couldn't go to funerals, children were dying alone with their parents watching them through screens, um, while they were partying in Westminster or in Downing Street, sorry. They cancelled Christmas while they still had theirs. To say they're evil, it really would. Evil would be able to sue them for defamation of character, actually, because they've gone beyond that. And I mean, lockdowns, lockdowns, they caused more problems than they solved. The, 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 the domestic abuse went through the bloody roof, that I know for a fact. Suicide went through the roof. People eating junk food skyrocketed. I've seen people that, that, that I hadn't seen, or at the time, that I hadn't seen for months, and the weight they put on was unreal. This was all again, this was, it's all unnatural stuff. They had people muzzled up, masks, face nappies, every time they went for bread. And yet I was getting called someone who was wearing a tinfoil hat. That's, you're supposed to be paranoid because you wear tinfoil hats. It's like, you've just said that I wear a tinfoil hat because I'm paranoid, but you're sitting there wearing a bloody mask. I remember once, the first, I cleared my throat in the shop. And I swear the woman just about dive behind the bloody cereal. I felt quite offended, like, I thought, what? Jesus Christ. If this would have been a week ago, you would never have done that. Mind control. And the that brings me to the masks. Masks were completely and utterly useless. Like I said, the first, one of the first posters I've seen was, coronaviruses do not travel through the air. Right, okay, so why... Are you, 
mandatorily making people wear masks. And someone in the comments the other day there said it was brilliant. Jacqueline, thank you. Um, so I do apologise for stealing it, but I'll, I'll have to for the purposes of the video. She said COVID was an IOQ test. And I thought it was brilliant. That is exactly what COVID was. It was an IQ test, a beta test. And they must have been killing themselves because a very small percentage of people weren't wearing masks. And at, yeah, every, at 8 o'clock every night, people would be standing at their doors. That's, that's um, pressing a button and getting people to dance. That's what that is. And I know the people, I'm not, I'm not saying anything against the people who were standing at the doors. The vast majority of them would genuinely have been trying to commend the nurses. But, and I'm not saying they shouldn't, but they shouldn't have been commended for 2020 because all I could see was that they were running around empty wards making bloody musicals and posting it on YouTube or TikTok or whatever it was. So if there was a pandemic, why was the hospitals empty? And it's, you're bound to have seen it. There's many people went round hospitals with cameras and videoed it. People were getting told to get out. Get out, you can't video this. But masks... Masks, like I said, they're... they're, they're well, put it this way, right? When you, when you have a mask on, you start to re-inhale your breathed out air which is bad for you, you're eventually going to get, get, get oxygen deficiencies for that. And oxygen deficiencies are bad, obviously it's bad for the brain, it slows down cognitive functions, um, which is why they were used in the MK Ultra Mind Control programs, which the CIA have declassified documents if you wish to go and take a look at it. They use these very masks. Um, 666. Six, six in front, six to the side, six back, masked up. It's, it's, it's all Satanism, that's what it was. People might think that's quite far out, but look at it. Look at the CIA, I had someone say, I had to explain these MK Ultra programs to someone when I was still drinking alcohol in a pub one night. And I sat there and explained it and how it worked. And that these, and it, was, it wasn't long after the CIA had declassified these documents because I'd just read them. And I'd say the, the CIA have actually declassified documents if you want to take a look at it. And then I'd start to explain what was going on with it. Then at the, at the end of the, of the conversation, if you like, the guy literally had the, 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 the audacity to turn around and say to me, well, where's the evidence for that? You can't help someone like that. Someone like that lies to themselves so much on a daily basis they'll have absolutely no idea who they are. And it, I, I just, I, I, didn't, I didn't respond to the question because there was no point. It's like, I've just told you where the evidence is for. Where, the, the, a declassified, which was once classified, which meant you weren't supposed to ever see it, but it's now been declassified. And, and what else was it? I mean, it was mind control. It's, I, was, I was standing in queues and it was getting to the stage, well, no, actually, I'm, I don't consent to this because it was all based on consent. And I would just walk in and I'd stop feeling bad about it because it's like, look, are you going to go in front of me? Well, no, I'm not allowed. But I'm not consenting to it. You're giving your consent, which means I can walk in and see the hatred you would get off of people. And it's like, well, you, you, can, you can take your power back too. I mean, this is just a small place, but it was just me and a couple of family members like that weren't wearing masks or anything like that. We got a lot of stick for it. And, and there's a lot of resentment even now. And I wonder if it's because deep down they know we were right. And that's not me saying, ha ha, I told you so. There's no good comes of that. Um, I would never do that to someone because it, it, it deters other people from coming forward and trying to find out the information. And then you say to yourself, well, why, why would they wear in masks if, they don't, if, if, they, if, if they're detrimental to your health and well, for reasons I've explained? Um, and, and, and while we're on it, I mean, viral particles who... Um, I think some of them measured as small as 0 0.35 microns, I think it's measured then. But yet, these masks, or the overwhelming majority of the masks people were wearing, were measured in between 1.6 and 3 microns. One virologist had said it's like trying to keep midges in with a chain link fence. Impossible. And again, you can go and check this and I absolutely encourage that you do. There was a, a, a lady came forward, a doctor came forward in 2020. Um, I, read, I read about it in a David Icke book, I can't remember what it was. 
uh, Marguerite, I wrote, I wrote her name down, Marguerite Grease Brisson, her name is, and she's a PhD and an MD, and she, she, she works out of London, and she came forward to say um, about the masks and, and how detrimental they were to people's health and how they slowed down cognitive abilities, etc., uh, cognitive abilities, etc., etc. And yet everyone was wearing these. And you look at some of the people that you would see wearing them as well, and they're all dirty and they were disgusting. And it's like, surely that's not healthier wearing that than not wearing it. Surely you're putting more people at risk, including yourself, than what I am. Obviously they didn't say anything. And yet, I mean, I've seen people recently wearing them. And I've got nothing against these people. And I had nothing against people that wear masks at the time. And people were actually saying, saying, oh, well, we can do what we want. Why are you calling people sheep? And it's like, I'm not calling everyone sheep. I have got no, I had, and I said this at the time, I had absolutely no problem whatsoever with people wearing masks. If that's what made you feel more comfortable, then you were well within your rights to wear it. And it was certainly none of my business, the fact that you'd chosen to wear it. The people I had a problem with were the people who were not only wanting to wear masks, but were ridiculing and actually getting, I mean, they were quite boisterous towards me for not wearing it because I didn't believe what they believed. I'm entitled to my opinion and you're entitled to yours. But a lot of people were thinking that because they were going with the government narrative, they had the right to try and silence me. And those same people, and I'd said to one guy, I said, well, you're going on about, this is, into the WhatsApp world of war and that, and said, but we've got our own battle for free speech here. Instead of, and he was, he was trying to silence me, saying, oh, this is nonsense, because he was buying the government narrative. And I was like, but this is, this is free speech, mate. I'm entitled to my opinion. And if they shut my free speech down, how long, how long is it going to be before they shut yours down? Well, this same person, rather than have his own fight for free speech, it was round about VE Day. And they actually decorated the house with VE decorations. It was embarrassing. Ah, it's okay, I'm all for free speech. I won't fight for it, but I'll put the decorations up to show it, was basically what they were saying. It was embarrassing. Um, oh, I forgot where I was going with that. Yeah, I'll just start, I mean... It's, I'll go on to the test. So the test was what was confirming all the cases. The PCR test, the polymerase reaction test, was designed by a man called uh, Kerry Mulis, and he was a PhD, um, and he got, a, he got a Nobel Prize for doing so in 1993. I think it was designed to detect lung cancers or whatever. And he actually said at the time that there was absolutely no point no point whatsoever than using this PCR test to detect viruses, any kind of coronavirus. There is no such test that exists for that. And yet, every time someone sneezed, they would get one of these tests out and test themselves in the hopes that they were going to get a day off work. Now, there's a guy called Mike Eden. He was former head of, uh, was it AstraZeneca? I can't remember, it's the other one. I'll come to him in a minute. But anyway, he was the head of it. And he was saying, if you've, if, if you've not got any symptoms, then you've not got enough viral matter in your upper region to infect anyone else. Symptomatic cases do not drive pandemics. And the definition of pandemic was actually changed in 2009. And I, actually, I wrote this down as well. Just bear with me a second here. Um, I mean, they ch changed the, the, the definition of it just before swine, swine flu. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Sorry, I do apologise. I should have had this. I just want to get the definition of it right. It must be in here. I can't remember. I can't find it. I can't remember the exact. But it basically, what it was saying was that it had to have. It had to have infected and killed a portion of the population relative to the. Or, or, killed a certain amount of people relative to the population, um, like a mortality rate. But then the new definition, it didn't need the mortality rate. So the old definition, COVID, the, pan the, the COVID pandemic would never have happened. That's why they had to change it. Um, and all they did was take, selected the sickest people in society. Uh, and um, 
giving them this test that didn't test for viruses that actually uses amplification. Now the problem with that is, is that it amplifies genetic material. Um, it selects two or three pieces of DNA and then it amplifies it. But it depends on um, how many cycles you run the test at. Anthony Fauci himself said anything above 35, it's going to get you a false positive, which is why watermelons were testing positive, cats were testing positive. I've seen one lady who tested positive under one nostril and negative under the other. This is why, because it depends on the cycles that it's running at. And this is another thing as well, when the, these new variants, the, the variants, that was ridiculous, because what they were doing was the select, like I said, the test has to select three, what was known as three primers to get a positive case. But then when the Omicron uh, strain came along, the test only needed to detect two primers. So even that was off. So what would have been a positive, what would have been a negative before then became a positive? Well, this is a new variant. I, I, thought, I, I think it was actually Mike Eden that said this, that these different variants is like, it's like taking a picture of your cousin with a hat on and then taking another picture and moving the heart a certain way, that's really the only difference. And it is a computer virus, in fact, it was a mind virus, COVID. Um, all they had, they didn't actually have the isolated virus. They had the, 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 the computer-generated isolation, isolated virus, which just fills in the next code, which what thinks it should be there. Um, so that's not accurate. And I, I think it was Andrew Kaufman had said, Dr. Andrew Kaufman, he was brilliant. He had said, it's like, going and getting sort of white hair off a horse and some hoofs and some ivory and saying that you've found evidence that unicorns exist. And then they were saying that exosomes were the, iris, the viruses and Andrew Kaufman said no, the exosomes are not viruses, that's part of the, 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 the immune response when you do get sick and viral load. I mean we've got the genetic material for these viruses and coronavirus in all the time. This is why they chose coronavirus because they're so common and they're so hard to detect. And we've got the genetic material for them. So, and it, 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 the, the, the body cells get poisoned, which increases, which is known as your viral load. Um, and then that's what brings the symptoms through. But that's immune system dependent, as I explained in another video, that's your literal antivirus. So if you keep that boosted, that, that'll always fight off that viral, well not always, but you'll certainly not be sick and it'll clear up quicker. But this, 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 is, this is the lies that were telling people. These were the lies that they were saying to people and everyone, see the thing about it is people believe what they want to hear and they don't want to believe that they didn't get to go to their family's funeral and didn't get to go out to nightclubs and all the rest of it and they don't want to believe that that was all for nothing or it was all in pursuit of these bringing in this dystopian agenda. Um, I mean, look at and it, look at the state of the economy. Look at how many how many shops are closing. I seen it the other day. There, I mean, even sports is is nightclubs are closing down at an awful rate. And when you when you look at COVID at the start of it, it dropped everything, everything like that. Football got stopped. Nights out. They wanted to do, it's in Agenda 2030 that they want done away with all these bloody hobbies. They're coming for football as well now, introducing blue cards. They're coming for rugby, saying that it's too dangerous. The same guy that said that said that football is a transphobic sport and we need to fight this. But this, this, is, this is all for the trigger for it. Um, and then, I know it's difficult for people to hear it. I genuinely do know it's difficult for people to, to, to hear it, but... People like this Neil Ferguson and that, they, they don't care as long as they get what they want or their masters get what they want. And then you look at Boris Johnson. I lost my train of thought there again. I do apologise. It happens all the time. And you look at Boris Johnson like, and then you go back to the COVID, the, the Olympics. Type in 2012 Olympics COVID section or virus section and it'll blow your mind. It really will. It's even got Boris Johnson in a bloody hospital bed, which happened in real life. And then it had the virus at the start of it and the dancing nurses and big witches casting spells. And what's that got to do with, to, with, with, with the Olympics? So that's all the predictive programming as, as it's known. And they know all this works. They, they know that all this works. But if you don't, that, you think of the power that gives them over you. And the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. 
And that's true. The one man I, the, the one eyed man is king in the kingdom of the blind. And we, we, we're in the kingdom of the blind and they've been the one eyed man for, for far too long. But thankfully, it's coming to the surface now and people are starting to see it for what it is. And I would absolutely start looking into that stuff as well because it is all real black magic and stuff like that. Um, once you start to look into it, it's the, because everything's energy, that's why it's possible. But that's for another video. Um, as is the, the coming after sports. The idea came up the other night there for me to do that. Which brings me to the to the cure. Now, f sorry, just, just before, yeah, brings me to the cure. So, when this fairy tale began, obviously people were wondering why why it was. And the, the, like I said, there's, there's, there's many reasons as to why they do it. But I think there was one main reason why they did this, because they wanted mandatory vaccinations. Now, or they wanted consent for mandatory vaccinations. Now, I told someone that I worked with some years ago that whatever you do, stay away from the inoculations. And he asked me what's an inoculation, and I told him. I've spoke to that person recently and re re reminded him, yeah, that's right, yeah. That's because, that's what proves there's a plan for the bloody world. Now, vaccines, right? I heard a doctor in Ireland say at the time that the concept of a vaccine is amazing, but it's like communism, it just doesn't work. Now, it, it might, it, I don't, I'm not a bioengineer, it might work and I'm not a virologist, but from what I can tell and from what I understand about reality is, is that we don't need vaccines, so, so I just need to take a vaccine and all my health sorted. I think that healthy eating, healthy living, exercise, thoughts, all that stuff. I mentioned the poison in the body cells there, right? That can happen with toxicity or radiation. But do you know the, do you know the most common way that our body cells get poisoned? Through stress and fear. Now you imagine the stress and fear that was being caused at that time. And people getting symptoms and thinking that it was COVID. Which actually, just on 5G for a minute. During March 2020, April 2020, I'd never seen so many BT vans in a three-week period in my whole life, and I hadn't. And apparently they were, they were putting up 5G towers, etc. Now, 5G, the last time it was, it was tested was in the bloody 70s, and I think you're, you're, only, you're only supposed to be exposed to, I think it's, I can't remember exactly, but I know when it gets to about 62 hertz, um the body starts to break down with the problems with the blood, the immune system, all kinds of things. And they tried this on mice once and everything that went wrong, everything that could have possibly have gone wrong did go wrong. Um, and this, 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 this was just at 62 hertz, but they're wanting to start running things at 140 hertz. And what that, I mean, some of the symptoms are like headaches, losing your taste, your smell, all that stuff. Well, I've just had that recently. I had that at Christmas. It was like radiation. And yet, they were saying at the same time that if you feel these effects, it's actually COVID you've got. Now, that's what I would, I would like to back David Icke up here I'd with Joe Rogan because there's something rubs me wrong about Joe, Ro Joe Rogan. Like, I don't like the man. And he's not a comedian either. I don't care. Somebody send him this because he needs to be corrected. David Icke did not say COVID and 5G were linked. David Icke said that the symptoms they are saying that's caused by COVID-19 are the same symptoms that you get when you're exposed to these frequencies. So now we've cleared that up, Joe. Go and have a think about what that means. This is a, 5G is a weapon of war. And it's, the Navy's used it since the 40s. I mean, it's, it's got so many benefits in war. I mean, it can, it kills crops for a start. There's a start switched on in Poland somewhere. And Barry Troa, um, he's a physicist and he was for the Navy, with the Navy for years and he, he talks about this stuff and, there was a 5G when it was switched on in Poland, I think it was in 2019 or 20, they'd done like this, this sort of test. Um, and it had killed like 70% of the crops in the area. 
So they're shutting down the farmers and then when they switch this bloody shit on, man, you've got no, you've got no idea what we're going to go through, like. And yet, in the summer of 2020, see, my mum started getting into these, these things and when the lockdown, the first one was lifted, I went down to the pub, still kind of drinking at the time. Uh, not often, like, but I went down because I thought it burned out. Well, anyway, I met, I met someone, oh, you and your mum, oh, saying about 5G and, and basically taking the piss and ridicule. And I said, well, hold on a second. I said, do you think 5G's safe? And they were like, and this, this is exactly what they said to me. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so, you, so, so you're laughing at me for saying something's not safe and that it could actually hurt us, your children included. And because you sit and watch the bloody news and they've said that it, that it is safe, you're ridiculing me. And yet I've just asked you if you're safe, if, it's, if you know it's safe and you said you don't know. The arrogance of that ignorance really blows me away, like really blows my mind and it's no wonder I don't want to be around people like that because you're only as good as the people around you and if there's no good people around you you need to be a good person on your own and that's just the way I look at it and, and yes yeah, so, 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 so these symptoms from Covid were used in five, were, were fi are 5G symptoms as well now the vaccines the vaccines I mean the, the, the health problems they've caused since because like I say, they're, 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 they've obviously poisoned the body's cells. They've, they've, they've undermined the immune system. There's graphene in it. Um, again, go to MHRA and have a look at this stuff. And, 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 and you'll see that... And that's only the, the, the adverse reactions that's actually been published, that's actually been reported. And yet you've got people at, um, like AstraZeneca and... I forget the name of that other one. And there's another one, I can't remember the name of it. See when I'm doing these videos, see the amount of things that slip your mind and you can't find it because you're still a little bit nervous. It's unbelievable. Um, and then I've just done it again. Yeah, anyway, we'll just continue with the vaccine. So, like I say, they're a bioweapon. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So they're, they're undermining the immune system and poisoning the body's cells. And I get why people don't want to face that, but these, these companies have actually said themselves that all protocol had gone out the window. That like they used to apparently they used to, and I heard I actually heard this with my own ears from the person that was running it. They used to have teams of police that used well not actual police, but they would go round and check the operation to make sure all safety procedures were being followed. All that went out the window when, when, when developing this vaccine. And this vaccine's been patented by Bill Gates, a man who stepped down from Microsoft in March 2020 to continue his, philanth his philanthropy of vaccines. And I remember at the time they had, um, they'd, get, they'd donated 10 million, 10, 10, or 10 billion, sorry. And I'd said to my papa at the time, I said, when was the last time anyone in this world donated anything like that kind of money to world poverty or hunger or feeding kids in third world countries, and never mind third world countries, feeding kids in this country? Why is it that there's always money for these, these sort of bullet points that are on their agenda and it's unlimited money? But yet anytime someone needs something to maybe start a business or even feed their kids that there's, oh, there's nothing. We're in austerity. Well, why are we in austerity? If we're in austerity, it's obviously because of you. So why are you still in power? But this is, this is, this is, this is what lobbying does, though. And it just, see, at the time, it was so frustrating. It really was because all I wanted to see, I was, like, I was saying at the time, look, do not believe a word I bloody say about this. Go and check it for yourself. You need to check it for yourself. And I was saying to people, look, don't go and get these, these, these cures, these apparent cures, before finding out what's in them. Now, people were saying to me, like, oh, oh, you're telling people what to do. You're telling people what to do. Oh, no, no, no. On the contrary, I'm telling people what not to do. And that is go and put a bloody toxic bioweapon shot into your body without first knowing what those ingredients are. And that was the reasoning for it. It, it was well, there were well people within the rights to do that. But even when I was standing in shops, I had a guy, oh, look, he's in the shop with no mask on. I had a mask exemption card. Um, 
Uh, look, miss, he was like a school child, nearly 40 year old man. Uh, uh, look, miss, he's got no mask on. It was embarrassing, pathetic. But that's where we were at. And, and, I, and I, I was still trying to help people, of course I was. I just didn't want to see what people were going through. I didn't want to see that happening to them, but it, but it did happen. And, and, the, and, and that doesn't mean to say that oh, it's, all, it's all lost. Because you can, still, you can still try and get your body to repair itself. As I said, DNA repairs itself, food is medicine. So you can start to look at getting the metal taken out of your body as well. Um, and I've said this before, I, I get why people don't want to face it yet. Although so many people are facing it now, like, but I can understand why they need to believe they've not got that stuff in them. And some people haven't got it in them because they may have this, is it the serum solution you call it, or the serum solution? Basically the same thing as what drug companies do. It's, cause of, it's because of the placebo effect. Um, so the placebo effect, they don't know if the drug's actually working or not because of the, how powerful the mind is. So what they need to do is they need to, they need to put like the, the, the substance into one tablet, if you like, and then take it out the next. Or I'm not sure of the ratio on it, but it's just to make sure that it's not the placebo effect that's actually causing the healing but rather it's the, it's, it's the drug. Well, the vaccine is the same thing. And there was another reason for that as well. They obviously couldn't have too many people dying to begin with because then it obviously proved what people like me were saying. So some lucky souls out there had caught the, 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 the solution that didn't have anything in it. And I would suggest that if you've not had any symptoms, then I would suggest that you're probably one of them. So congratulations. But even if, I mean, even if you are, even if you have had them, had symptoms, just get to work and, Start healing yourself because you can, most notably with your mind. Um, and that's that's really where we're at with it. Um, we're we're sort of kind of we're continuing through this this um, this journey with these people that, are, that these people are taking us on. And I know it seems like things are getting worse, but. It's always the same with psychopaths, and I've said that before as well, um, that when psychopaths feel the wall closing in, of course, they just, they just chuck a span on the works, if you like, and cause as much chaos as, 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 as you possibly can. And like I say, the reason that I wanted to sort of do this video was because it is still relevant. Um, I, wanted to keep, I wanted to keep this channel relevant, and I think it's probably important that people know this stuff and... This is just, this is the touch of the, the iceberg, man. I mean, this is, there's literally hundreds of things, thousands of bits of information that can prove that they knew that it was coming. And it's like, I mean, the, 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 the development of the vaccine is, is, is one, is one like, because they, apparently it takes 20 years to safely test and develop and manufacture a, a, a vaccine. It takes 20 years um, the time you do the testing and all the rest of it. So how the hell is it within a year it was pushed through? So it doesn't matter which way you look at this. Either they knew it was coming, which means they made the vaccine early and it was already waiting in the wings, or they um, pushed it through without going through protocol and developing it quicker than they should have. I would say it's probably a bit of both. I would say both of them are true. But when you start hearing from people at AstraZeneca, um, and they're saying that all process went out the window, well, first and foremost, why did it get out the, the window? And why are you sitting there bloody saying it and not in cuffs or whatever or being held accountable? And people wonder why. And it's silence. There's silence out there with it. I've never seen so many funerals in a week in this place. As you get now. Honestly, it's ridiculous. And I'm, and I'm sorry that it happened, I genuinely am. I, I tried my best. But there's no point being silent to it. We need to face it. I mean, there's defibrillators everywhere. I don't know what it's like in your town, but they're everywhere here. Why, why, why now? Why now? And this, this is a long COVID. Well, I've asked people, what does that mean? Oh, I don't know. It means I've had COVID for a while. I, but, but why? It was the same in all. I mentioned Katie Mullis there with the test. I remember, it, again, that was another thing I'd stick for, because when people start getting angry with you on an opinion, 
then it's, it's just in their subconscious is reminding them of their programme and that's why they're getting angry. And they were saying to me, and because I, I was saying to people, look, the, 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 the guy that developed this test saying it's, and he's dead, he actually died actually, that's something I forgot to think he into. He died not long before event 201, coincidentally enough. But people were saying to me, oh, Kerry Mewis. Um, well, I was saying, Kerry Mullis was actually saying, to, saying that it, it doesn't test for viruses. This does not tell you that you're sick. You shouldn't be testing for any kind of coronavirus for it. And so many people I had Facebook still at the time were saying, oh, Kerry Mullis, it was taken out of context. That was taken out of context. That was taken out of context. No one had given any reasoning as to why it was taken out of context. It was just taken out of context. And I thought, well, and I'd said to them, many, many times. How, how does that statement get taken out of context? How does this virus does not test for any kind of coronavirus and will not tell you that you're sick? How does that get taken out of context? And I asked them and not one of them could answer. <laughs> and I went and I thought, right, why are they all saying this? So I googled it. I, I googled Kerry Mueller's PCR and words to that effect and saying that it doesn't test for viruses and it came up. First article that popped up, I clicked on it and read it. And in the article, it described, it was just an article, a nonsense describing how it was all taken out of context. Excuse me. Now the reason they could not give me a reason as to why that was out of context was because the article that they had all Googled, or the article that they had came up after Googling such a thing, didn't give any reason as to why it was taken out of context. It was just taken out of context. That'll do me. That's fine. This this thing works. And I had it in the post office in this place as well at the time. And we were, I was standing start talking to another woman, another woman like, and we we're saying that now something doesn't seem right with all this. And we're talking away, and she had some good points, and I had some good points. Well, there was someone standing like next to us as well. Nothing it didn't nothing to do with her. We were just having a conversation. And she actually butted in to our conversation because she didn't like what... I said, hold on a minute. We're having a conversation here. Um, it's nothing to do with you. But her daughter worked at the bloody NHS and my daughter works at the NHS. Right, okay. And what? I said, perhaps you can maybe give us the isolation method then, which she wouldn't have been able to do. And I said, so who am I going to listen to? Right, this is the guy that's designed this test. Do I listen to him or do I listen to your daughter? You're going to listen to the guy that designed the test. It was just the fluoride stare, though. It was ridiculous. I seen her the other day there, actually. She couldn't look at me, which is funny, like, because that means they know. Which I'm not holding it against. I'm not a child. You, got, you made a mistake. Well, it happens. I've got something wrong as well, but we need to come together and, and sort of get on. And, but someone mentioned in the, 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 the comments the other day there, Alan, you've done the right thing to come to YouTube because you can't be a prophet in your hometown. And that's true because the resentment's everywhere and, and it has been even before I started doing this. Which, which is fine, it doesn't bother me. Like, I've lived in the edge so long that I don't really know anything else. And I'm actually very proud of myself that I could stand on my own, on my own two feet. Even this whole place was against me. All of them were against me. Say, well, don't listen to what he's saying. Don't listen to what he's saying. I bet you wish you could take that back now. But it's not personal. I still make these videos. I still hope they watch them. I still hope they take something from it and try and heal themselves because genuinely that's what I want for us all. I want everyone to, to, to sort of feel happy because it's, it's not about looks, nothing to do with looks, but how you feel. And I feel great inside and it's because of this information that I was once told your, your head's wasted, mate. Put it down. I've gave up relationships. A girl telling me, I'll put these books down. Pfft, no chance. You put you down first, we are. But all these people that used to tell me, oh, you're into these conspiracies too much. Or, put it down and your head's wasted. Now the rest of it. I dread to think where I would be if I listened to those people. It, it just isn't worth it. I might not be sitting here now had I listened to those people. So... That's why you should always listen to your gut and always stand on what you believe. Even if you're in a minority of one, the truth is still the truth. The truth has no agenda and it'll always, always, always stand the test of time. That's why David, David Icke's been so prophetic because his honesty has stood the test of time. Um, 
because he's looked, he's a world-class researcher that has looked into this stuff and he's made these connections and he's put it out there for us and i just like to say a big thank you to him because when I started this, I thought quite a lot about him and what he must have went through in the 1990s, there in 1990, when he came forward with this. I've had a little bit of, little bit of problems and trolls and all the rest of it. But 98%, 99% of the time, probably more, it's been positive like. His was 99% negative, in fact it was probably more than that and it wasn't just him, it was his family. And he busted this door down for us, for people like me to then learn it. And, and so many others as well. And I think about what he must have went through. How, how he done it. How he managed to, because he was preventing snooker. And then he was talking about all this stuff, about how the world wasn't like we were told it was. And, and it's thanks to him that I've gotten here. And I would just like to say a big thank you to him. Um, because he has saved my life in more ways than one. And he's helped me, as I've explained, save other people's lives. And he predicted this. And I disagree with him on this. It's, I think it's in the it Inhuman Race Off Your Knees. But he's basically said that they're going to want to come for mandatory vaccinations. And they need a reason for it. Which will be, it could be a fake pandemic. And I remember thinking at the time, like, well, if it's fake, uh, surely if no one's dying, then people will see that and it will not go anywhere. So I, I staunchly disagree with him on that. But I underestimated the stupidity of people. Um... No, sorry, no, not the stupidity, just the cowardice of some people because it well, there was a lot of cowardice and I don't mean to be I don't mean to be derogatory when I say that. And I understood why there was as well, because people a lot of people just want to take care of their kids and in the beginning there could have been something out there, but when we found when we revealed when it's been revealed that there's not, then we need to sort of stand up and try and hold accountable for the people who had sort of administered it and that's why I was against Nicola Sturgeon because I knew she was I knew she was working for them like I knew it you could just tell and another thing I got ostracised for and people don't speak to me this day because of my opinion on her which which I don't care that's, that's the trash takes itself out in that case and again you're only as good as the people around you and there's no point sticking around with people that you've you've got nothing in common with or that they don't let you sort of be on your own and or be your own person. That's why you need to be on your own sometimes. And hopefully we can all start working together and and start healing not just ourselves or not just the planet but ourselves. And um, maybe we can start finding out who we really are and start to make a real change. And it is again just a change of thinking. Um, and if I hadn't changed my thinking, like I say, I probably wouldn't be sitting here. So if you are sitting here, then. What are you going to do now, now that you've heard this information? And you've probably most of you have heard it anyway, because that's one thing I've found, that in the comments there's, there, there, there's so many well-informed people, they're just so bloody intelligent, it's unreal. And some of them have reached out to me, I mean there's one, Alex Kearney, absolutely brilliant, and I'll post a link to his, to his channel. Real talker, amazing, beautifully articulate, he relays it amazingly and he gets you to understand things, he knows about the law, and it's not just somebody that's read it in a book, he's actually been through the ringer with it. He's on his videos, um, AC coming back to life. And he's, he's, he knows, listen, if you've got a problem with the law, he'll be able to advise you on it. And like I say, I'll post a link because we need to start networking and, and coming together. And, and if there's someone out there that can genuinely, and he will help you if you reach out to him, um, then I think we should be obviously posting the information to those individuals' channels, which is like I say, I'll do... Uh, at some point today, um, I've got a live coming up tonight. I'm not sure if this will be up by end time. It might be live, but um, I think that's probably just about covered all of it. I mean, I didn't want to go too deeply into. I mean, because I've got more notes here than that. But I, I could be sitting here for three and four hours, like, and I genuinely could sit and talk about this in three or four hours. And this is what I'm going to. I want to keep the live streams for that type of thing. Um, just so we can, that's why I've made it a little bit earlier this one, just to maybe try and get two hours, two and a half hours in so that we can obviously discuss it for longer. Um, and then we can obviously have these long discussions and, and this time I'll read out the questions. I would just like to thank everyone um, for tuning into this latest video and your continued support. I, I, I can't tell you how appreciative I am of every single last one of you because you have given me inspiration to keep going and I, I, I can't thank you enough for that. I, 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 from the bottom of my heart, I, I, I really do because if you hadn't have done that, I probably wouldn't have made all these videos. So 
Thank you very much and again for your continued support and I'll try and keep you as, as informed and possible, as possible, sorry. Um, I'd like to thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your evening and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Take care.